All right, so we're back. And what I want to do um, in this video is talk a little bit about how Revit creates 2D views from 3D objects. And it's quite a powerful um, option that you have either to import existing objects uh, from various programs in here or to um, get views of native Revit objects that you've made. Um, basically, Revit has a series of view types that literally section um, the model for you and generate some orthographic views. So, um, and the way that it does that is really by assigning various parameters to these view types. And we'll talk more about parameters as, um, as time goes on in parametric um, options. All right. So right now I'm in the site view. So if you want to follow along, you can open up your Revit project with your conceptual mass um, loaded into it. We are in the site view right now. And what I want to do is I want to double click on level one. All right, so I'm going to double click on level one. And it's going to bring me into the level one floor plan view. You can see it's a floor plan view. And it's a little off center, so I'm going to type ZE and that's going to zoom extents for that particular view. You can see that it is sectioning or giving me a floor plan section through this particular view and it's filling with the gray fill that we assigned in the conceptual mass. Now the actual elevation information is in white and that's not because it's not reading the shading, it's because it's actually in a hidden line view as opposed to a shaded view. So let's go ahead and um, change it to a shaded view. Down here at the bottom left is your view control bar with various different options, one of which is a visual style, which is this cube. So if you hover over it, it will say hidden line. If you left click on it, it will give you various options. So if you select shaded, you'll see that it will turn the model to red based on the shaded view. Now, how is Revit generating this particular floor plan? Obviously, we're on level one, but what does that mean? So let's take a look at that. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of clean up my views. So I'm going to type WT to tile all my different open views. And you can see I have my level one for the Revit project. I have my site for the Revit project. I have my level two for the project that must have been opened earlier. And then I have my Revit family conceptual mass still open. And really all I want open now is my level one. So I'm just going to go ahead and close all of these various views and then maximize this level one floor plan. All right. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to open up an east elevation. Um, if you look in your project browser, which yours might be down here, you will have floor plans, 3D views, and then there is an elevation. You may need to expand that and double click on East Elevation. Now I'm going to type WT and that's going to tile those windows and then I'm going to zoom extents for each window. Zoom extents and then left clicking in white space to activate that window and ZE for zoom extents. In the elevation, I'm going to scroll my middle mouse to zoom in on these levels right here. So you can see level one and level two corresponding to the floor plans level one and level two. So now we have an idea of where sort of the base levels for those uh, plan views are taken from, right? So let's look at it a little bit more closely. All right, so I'm going to left click in my level one view just to activate it, okay? And when you left click in there, it's going to give you the properties and you're going to see floor plan over here. And I'm going to scroll down in my properties dialog box and down near the bottom is an extents area. All right. And if you go to view range, you can select edit and it's going to bring up a view range dialog box. <clears throat> And this is, remember, this is for level one. So the top of the view range is at seven foot six. So if you go to zero up to seven foot six, that's the top of the view range for this. So that's sort of the selectable area. That's the general space or area of the model that this particular view is looking at. The cut plane is offset from level one by four feet. So come up four feet, that's where this level one section is taken. 
the bottom is zero from level one. So from zero to seven foot six is the general view selectable range that it's um, understanding. Now there's a separate view depth. So you can see that it's viewing all the way down to level one. So it's going down to level one so we can see the entire sort of range of that. So let's change it and apply it. So for example, if I come up to the cut plane and I set the cut plane at let's say one foot and I hit apply. Watch the level one when I hit apply. Right, you see how it updates that? Now let's say I come back in here and set it to six feet and apply. Right, now it's changing. So basically it's just moving that cut plane. You can't see a representation of it here, but it's moving that cut plane up and down based on its relationship to the location of level one. All right, so I'll go ahead and change this back to four feet. All right, and click OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and open up level two. And I'll size this just to sort of fit over level one. All right, so very similar situation here. If we come over, make sure that level two is activated. You can also highlight level two over here and it will show you the properties as well. Um, you come down to the extents for level two, you go to edit, and you have the same setup here, but only difference is, is that level two is the one that's being referenced. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and update this section. So you could update this to two feet and apply, right? And it's just going to continue to adjust that section for you. All right, one feet and apply. You could actually set this cut plane to zero and apply. And now it's cutting coincident with level two. All right, so we'll leave it there for just a second and I'm going to click OK. Now, you can definitely adjust your section cut plane or your plan cut plane by adjusting that um, cut plane level, but really what you would want to do is have the cut plane levels sort of consistent. And if you want to adjust where your section's being cut, you just move your level. Basically these levels in a more traditional, say architectural model represent finished floor. So you would be cutting four feet above finished floor. All right. So if I select level two and I want to move it up, right? you'll see that this will immediately update because the settings for that level are still the same. So for example, if I go to level two, level, level two, come over here, go to view range and edit, it's now applying all of these parameters to this level location, right? So it just moves that whole range and that cut plane up and down with that level. All right. Now, one thing is that, again, I cheated and so my, my model is kind of going outside the 64. So I'm going to stretch these level markers out so they're not hitting my model. So to do that, I can select and you'll see that it'll give you this little round circle. And if it's a round empty circle, there should be a 3D. And what it's going to do is when I left click on that little round circle, it's going to allow me to pull it and it's going to move it in three dimensions. One thing you should understand is that these are not just annotations. Obviously, we've been talking about how they're actually section planes, but they're not only two dimensional. They actually exist in the west elevation as well. So if you go to the west elevation, you're going to see that those show up here as well. OK, so we're actually moving them out in, in and out in both situations. So I'm just going to close that west elevation. All right. Now. Okay, the last thing I want to do is I want to create some new, show you how to create some new levels. So I'm going to maximize this east elevation for right now. And I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to take this level back down to, let's take it to 10 feet. Okay, so now that is sectioning through there. Now, say you wanted to have um, section cuts at every 10 feet. So there's a couple of ways to create levels. One way is to select an existing level, hover over it, 
until the move comes on, hold down the control key, left click, hold it down and drag up and that will make a copy. And you can copy it up until it's exactly where you want it if you can get it easily. You can notice that blue alignment line is making sure it's aligned. Now you want to notice that there is a blue end to this one and a black end to this one. That means this is a reference level. Notice that there's no corresponding level here. Anything that has a blue end to it is a hyperlink. So if I double click on that, it takes me to level two. So I'm just going to close that. This one does not have a hyperlink on it. We can actually add it to our floor plans quite easily. To do that, you go to your view tab. And in your view tab are plan views. And if you go to that pull down, there are floor plan views. And if I click on that, it's going to list all the levels that are available to me that are reference levels. Right now I only have one and I just click OK. And it will actually take me to that view, level three, and create the level three as a hyperlinked view. OK. Now another way to create a, a level it's quite simple as well, is you can come in to the architecture tab and there's a level. Shortcut for me is LL. If you left click on level, it says down here click to enter level start point. This is sort of like a status bar or a, um, that you can use to give you a clue of what you may want to do. So I'm just going to sort of left click here and drag over until that blue alignment line and that gives me a level four. Okay. And you'll notice that if you do it that way, it automatically creates a level for you. All right. So now I have four levels. So if I go to level one, open level one, level two, level three, level four, and I dub window tile and let's get rid of the east elevation. Okay, and I'll just make each one of these fill up. And then I'll just type ZE. You'll see that I have four basic floor plans. Okay, all cutting at different levels. So you can insert pretty much any object in here that you want to, and it will cut it up based on those levels. All right, so when we come back, we'll talk about elevations.